everyone, welcome to episode 2 of Finding Atlantis. Today, we are going to discuss about an extremely interesting concept called heart rate variability. Did you have a stressful month? Are you worried? How is it impacting your physical and mental health? Are your daily practices of meditation, yoga, exercise helping you elevate some of your stress? Do you have an important meeting next week? And can you do something today to actually change the performance in your meeting next week? HRV is the piece of data that would help you answer all these questions. Today, I'm extremely excited to welcome Dr. Ron Garbo, an expert in heart rate variability for 11 years. He's both certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation and neuromuscular electrophysiology. And he coaches athletes, coaches, and corporate leaders on physiology of leadership and sustainable high performance through ANS Health LLC. So let's just get right into it. Journey of life can sometimes be a bumpy ride. And sometimes you might slip into complete darkness. But if you look inside of you, you'll find a bright light, your paradise, your inner Atlantis and things will just get brighter after that. So let's find your inner Atlantis. Hey, Dr. Garbo, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for being here today. It's great to be with you, Kathy. Thank you. Uh, so for all our listeners who are new to heart rate variability, can you actually explain them what HRV is? Sure, it's a, it's a fascinating uh, body of science. Mm -hmm. um, for whole health. Just start simply, uh, heart rate. We know heart rate is a measure of health, and I'll just use you and I as an example. Uh, if your heart rate average, you know, your beat-to-beat -beat variation is your HRV, but your average heart rate is 60 and mine is 80, we know that you're doing the same amount of work sitting here. Uh, you're vastly more efficient and healthier uh, than I am. Now, if there's a third person and your average is 60 and their average is 60, and, but they vary between 58 and 62 and yours varies between 50 and 70, that's another measure, uh, even more sensitive measure of whole health, physical and emotional health. And, the, and so the bigger the variability in general, the healthier it is. And the easy way to remember that is heart rate variability takes into account the diaphragm. So it's the diaphragm that is the biggest modifier of that variability. So to recap, to keep it simple, is the stronger the diaphragm, the bigger the HRV, the more resilient you can handle more and more things. So from what I understand is the higher the heart rate variability, the better it is. Uh, so is it uh, okay to say that if I'm more stressed, then my heart rate variability will be low? And if I'm less stressed or relaxed, my heart rate variability will be high? So, so I'm a physician there's, yeah. there's, and a researcher. And so there's several if, ands, or buts to that. But mm -hmm. if we're doing the introductory course today into heart rate variability, I think that's a, a, a fair uh, a, a fair way to look at it and think of it when you get stressed you may be holding your breath you know your diaphragm's not moving so your heart rate variability is reduced if you're under duress and stress so yes uh, one of the main ways to modulate HRV that you just mentioned is diaphragmic breathing are there any other ways to modulate HRV sure you can uh, learn many different ways to, to expand your HRV and, and art, music, meditation, prayer. Um, people have all kinds of ways. But if um, I think the next step, I think you hear people, I tried meditation, that didn't work for me. Um, I, don't, I don't accept that really in my clinic. Um, we, will, we will go back and let's, go, let's get some training wheels on. So meditation is maybe three or four different things. One of them is diaphragmatic breathing. Another is moment-to-moment -moment awareness, uh, awareness of reality, uh, awareness of salience, which is how important is this? Am I going to make a mountain out of this molehill or not? Uh, and, and improving decision-making 
in line with your purpose and values. So meditation is several things. So let's back up and let's just get you with the diaphragm skill. And I'm going to prescribe 10 minutes twice a day and as needed right after technology and before you go to bed to improve your nighttime HRV. Um, and so we put the training wheels on and eventually we want you off of them. You know, we'd like you to be able to do this, um, you know, with your favorite set in your iPod or with meditation or with music or a picture or a pet. Um, and so eventually we want you off it, but this is one element of meditation, the focused diaphragmatic breathing, and it's a skill and it's an objective skill. And we are going to put out here in 2020, uh, the results of the largest randomized control trial uh, study for mm -hmm. heart rate variability for chronic pain. You've actually trained or coached a lot of athletes and corporate leaders on sustained performance. Uh, can you talk a bit more on it? Sure, sure. What, and so I, I like to, as clean as I can, um, what, what I think I can do is help people change the trajectory of their health or their decision making. Mm -hmm. And uh, who I believe I can help are, are people who recognize they're stuck. And we all get stuck in different ways, whether it's test taking, uh, free throw shooting. We all eventually get stuck in some form or another. And so if you recognize you're stuck, what I am good at is helping you get out of your own way. I can't make you taller. Okay. Um, but if uh, you're shooting 30% uh, free throws in a game and 70% in practice, and the distance between the hoop and the line are still the same, there's, there's stuff going on outside and inside that are dis disrupting and you're, and you're stuck. So I, I think I can, uh, in the performance world, I, I can get people out of their own way if they recognize they're stuck, if they own that. And in the health world, uh, I think I can, you know, you may still have diabetes, but uh, you might be able to make better decision making to affect your diabetes. So, so I talk about health trajectory change. So uh, can you actually also tell us uh, how can HRV be used to measure physiological changes or effects of meditation or mindfulness on your body? Yeah, so I, th I think you have to... Uh, we have to, we're going to have to look at the brain versus the physiology. And so, um, you know, what, how the brain interprets things and all the pathways, you know, this, this is a bottom up physiology first and then brain second. And so, so how things get interpreted can be different. Everybody's made differently. So it is used in, in lie detection tests. Now people call them lie detection. They're not, it's just measuring distress so it's only measuring distress and and so hiv is incredibly sensitive of physical or emotional distress but it's not specific so we always have to remember so in the case of a basketball team i work with you know somebody's hrv is dropping over overnight it could be due to they're not drinking enough fluids it could be failing calculus their parents could be getting a divorce and those are actual examples so it requires somebody to decipher the data and ask the right questions. Something is amiss. If your overnight HIV three nights in a row is tanked, um, you better pay attention. It's going to start to affect uh, your performance, your relationships, and how you feel. How did you get into this journey? Uh, five years into medical practice, I had a, a pretty healthy, I had a heart arrhythmia, atrial fibrillation. And the cardiologist said, you know, you don't have any risk factors. And I asked if it could be stress. And he said, no, and I was saying, that's, that, that's got to be it. Uh, and it took me a few years to find meditation. It took me several more years to find heart rate variability. And for the last 11 years, um, I've been passionate about understanding the science and applying it in my practice and for other people and making it practical. I, 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 I like to think uh, I, uh, the most um, science-based 
pragmatic applier of this science. Um, and that's what I'm fascinated by because it's, it's really unlocks a lot of secrets about mindfulness and mind-body connection. But there are limitations. But uh, if you don't make it something it isn't and you just take what it gives you, it's, it's amazing uh, what it gives. Definitely. And uh, you just mentioned that you did face some challenges along the way. So can you talk a bit more about what you tried, what worked, what didn't work? Um, yeah, I, I mean, like I said, I tried meditation. Um, you know, I, I would have a various routine. You know, now I call it, uh, so I have a publication coming out, Autonomic Rehabilitation. And now the term I call are resets, autonomic resets. Uh, exercise is a good reset. Um, a massage is a good reset. Um, a fluid tank is a good reset. Uh, acupuncture could be a, a good reset. Music could be a reset. You know, I tried various things and sometimes they'd work and sometimes they wouldn't. Um, and then again, I tried meditation on my own, reading books in a group and not until I had some structured one-on-one uh, -on -one training uh, did I finally start to feel it and uh, with some regularity. So I think, I think focused breathing with heart rate variability biofeedback is the doorway to the rest of them if you're not getting it. Um, and I think a lot of people have already figured it out. They play music and are able to do it. Um, and so lots of people have figured this out. I think what I've done is provide a template, a pathway, for the people who this pathway that other people have found uh, hasn't worked and we can step back and do it in a methodical way. Uh, thank you so much. Are there any final recommendations or any, any insights that you have? Just, uh, just uh, uh, stay, uh, stay, stay focused on uh, heart rate variability. It's going to uh, change the way we look at, at a lot of things um, and there's just more and more to keep coming and you can uh, uh, we have a podcast as well uh, that we're starting called the abstract doctors you can reach out to me on LinkedIn um, so and stay tuned perfect thank you so much this was wonderful today thank you Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found the content of this video useful. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel and follow me on Instagram.